And for the Mr. De La Costa, you're late again. Sir, may tatanong lang ako. Saan dito? Ay, pagod ko yung Fedex Space Event. Diyan, sir. Tapos perang lipo. Be, pengi pulbo. Dalian mo, Nicole. Hello, tanya. Tumabing ka nga. Excuse. Guys, nakita niyo ba cellphone ko? Bakit may batong sa bag ko? Crush ka niyan. Uy, kuya, hindi. Tumigil na ako yun. Ate, open time, PC4. Kuya, tapos sa isang kwekwek. Wala, wala doon klase bukas. Yes, salamat, COVID. So before we start, I want to see your smile. I want to see your smile. Teaching strategies are beneficial to the education of people, especially at times when both the instructors and learners are still exploring their limits and potentialities in order to have an effective learning environment. It helps the students stimulate and acquire the knowledge efficiently. On the other hand, it helps the teachers fulfill their duties through utilizing effective and appropriate techniques for their students. With the innovation and a shift from face-to-face -face online learning, teachers and students are now adjusting to the new normal setup, which is indeed a challenge to the educational system. By this, as psychology majors, we can contribute to the betterment of education through sharing the application of varieties of teaching strategies founded based on the principles of psychology. One of these is what we call scaffolding method. Here, we present our philosophy of education. Dr. Lev Semyonovich Vygotsky was a seminal Russian psychologist who is best known for his sociocultural theory. He believed that social interaction plays a critical role in children's learning. Lev Vygotsky was born November 17, 1896 in Orsha, a city in the western region of the Russian Empire. He attended Moscow State University where he graduated with a degree in law in in 1917. Vygotsky studied a range of topics while at university including sociology, linguistics, psychology, and philosophy. However, his formal work in psychology did not begin until 1924 when he attended the Institute of Psychology in Moscow. Vygotsky was a prolific writer publishing six books on psychology topics over a 10-year period. His interests were diverse but often centered on issues of child development and education. He is often known as the Mozart of psychology because just like the famous composer, Vygotsky came up with several different theories in a short span of time, demonstrating his ingenuity. However, his life was cut short by tuberculosis and he died at the age of 38, leaving many of his theories incomplete. Since then, Vygotsky's works have been translated and have become very influential, particularly in the area of education. A seminar psychologist believes that people around you or the person beside you when you are a child and the culture in the environment you live with were responsible in your cognitive development. According to Vygotsky, learning has its basis and in interacting with other people, once it has occurred, the information then integrated to individual's knowledge. 
Vygotsky was become reference to other great thinkers and some of them developed his writing in the field of child development, cognitive psychology, and education over past several decades. Socio-cultural theory is an emerging theory in psychology that looks at the important contribution that society makes to individual development. This theory not only focuses on how adult thinkers influence the developing child, but also on how cultural beliefs and attitudes affect how learning takes place. Here in this theory, social interaction and culture where the child is living with are the major factors on their cognitive development. It is more on guidance or supervision, but later on as the child learns his capabilities, they are able to progressively extend their skill and knowledge to execute action on their own. Application of Vygotsky's Theory in Classroom According to Daniels 1995 and Wirtz 1991, Vygotsky's concept of the Zone of Proximal Development or the ZPD is based on the idea that development is defined both by what a child can do independently and by what the child can do when assisted by an adult or more competent peer. Knowing both levels of Vygotsky's Zone is useful for teachers for these levels indicate where the child is at a given moment as well as where the child is going. The zone of proximal development or the ZPD has several implications for teaching in the classroom. According to Vygotsky, for the curriculum to be developmentally appropriate, the teacher must plan activities that encompass not only what children are capable of doing on their own, but what they can learn with the help of others. Application of Vygotsky's theory in cultural beliefs and attitudes. Sociocultural theory focuses not only how adults and peers influence individual learning, but also on how cultural beliefs and attitudes affect how learning takes place. According to Vygotsky, children are born with basic biological constraints on their minds. Each culture, however, provides tools of intellectual adaptation. These tools allow children to use their abilities in a way that is adaptive to the culture in which they live. For example, while one culture might emphasize memory strategies, such as note-taking, another might use tools like reminders for note memorization. What is learning? Learner, this is a person or a student acquiring new understanding, knowledge, behaviors, skills, values, attitude, and preferences. So what is learning? Learning, this is a deep and long-lasting learning involves understanding, relating ideas, and making connections between prior and new knowledge. This is a independent and critical thinking and ability to transfer knowledge to a new and different context. What is constructivism? This is a theory that says learners construct knowledge rather than just possibly taking information. The constructivist teaching is based on the belief that learning occurs as learners are actively involved in the process of learning and knowledge themselves, as opposed to possibly receiving information, build their own representation, and incorporate new 
information into their pre-existing knowledge. So the example of constructivism teaching methods, first, class discussion, second, films, third, field trips, fourth, experimentation, and the fifth is research project. A healthy learner manifests the ability of having a good social relationship which includes interaction and communication with other learners and being able to respond accordingly to its teacher's given instructions and directions. With the help of the zone of proximal development, whereas this zone is the area of exploration for which the learner is cognitively prepared but requires help and social interaction to fully develop. A teacher or more experienced peer is able to provide the learner with scaffolding to support the student's evolving understanding of knowledge, domains, or development of complex skills. Collaborative learning, discourse, modeling, and scaffolding are strategies for supporting the intellectual knowledge and skills of learners and facilitating intentional learning. Social interaction with the learning environment, active participation in group tasks and good teacher-student relationship are the key factors in learners' healthy development and growth. And these factors need to maintain in order to achieve learners' full potential. Unhealthy learner is someone who is unable to socially interact and communicate with knowledgeable others and teachers which lead to inability to learn. This kind of learner is declining the information provider support through isolation, to which the learner is unable to gain new information and understanding that a person needs to be able to improve current skills and knowledge level. Without the help of instructional scaffolding, the unhealthy learner can never acquire new skills and can only rely on what his current knowledge, which results to unsuccessful outcomes. Unhealthy learner feels unmotivated and inattentive while the teacher is facilitating its students. Unhealthy learners also could not be able to grasp knowledge if there will be no social interactions with the learning environment, such as group tasks and teacher-student relationship, wherein they give and take the information presented and engage themselves actively. Change process. The change process in which the teachers model or demonstrate how to solve a problem and then step back, offering support as needed. The theory is that when students are given the support they need while learning, they stand a better chance of using that knowledge independently. about the role of teacher and the role of learner. The role of teacher in this strategy is to help the student understand and process information. Providing support or scaffolding is a critical component in teaching new tasks with multiple steps. Many teachers do this naturally when teaching a new task or strategy, whereas others need to purposely incorporate scaffolding into their teaching styles. It is important to remember, however, that even when students have learned the purpose of a strategy and have memorized the step, they may still not be ready to use the strategy independently. The information from the teachers allow the student to progress more and educate them to be a more knowledgeable individual. Teachers lead the student to learn and help them do what they can do. Next to that, students eventually can do things on their own by the guidance of teacher and make decisions on their own without the help of others. The role of learner is to associate it with the world around them. 
with peers, with the specialists, and with instructive materials. Through dynamic engagement, the learner develops information and meaning, watching how objects and concepts associated and making a cognitive system for making sense of it all. The learner is regularly free to seek after their claim interface, as long as they are challenging themselves and forming new thoughts all through the process. Learners must learn to combine and use data with their current information. Learners ought to stem the trial and mistake approach by addressing thoughts and assessing concepts through real-world activities. Teaching Strategies As a general instructional strategy, scaffolding shares many similarities with differentiation, which refers to a wide variety of teaching strategies and lesson adaptations that educators use to instruct a diverse group of students with diverse learning needs in the same course, classroom, or learning environment. To understand how to use it, Below are the four steps for using scaffolding in the classroom. Advantages First, sociocultural theory integrates the notion of learning and development, greatly contributing to our theoretical understanding of cognitive development. The idea of learning driving development rather than being determined by a developmental level of the learner fundamentally changes our understanding of the learning process and has significant instructional and educational implications. Next, Scaffolding methods lets the student know better about their topic and the expectations of their teachers from the beginning. This makes them focus more on studies and perform well in their learning process. It creates a supportive, structured classroom that puts a lot less stress on the students. Also, scaffolding helps students to improve comprehension. Every student varied from each other and learns in a different manner. This makes some students lag behind than the others. However, with scaffolding technique, students who struggle to switch new topics get away way understand things better and more clearly than before. Lastly, scaffolding allows students to build confidence that helps them tackle more difficult tasks. Also, it can help motivate students to succeed and achieve its full potential. As students become more proficient, they desire to learn more about the subject. Disadvantages First, the theory is associated with the vagueness of the zone of proximal development of the ZPD. Individuals may have wide or narrow zones, which may be both desirable and undesirable, depending on the circumstances. Knowing only the width of the zone does not provide an accurate picture of their learning, ability, style of learning, and current level of development compared to other children of the same age and degree of motivation. In addition, there is little known about whether a child zone is comparable across different learning domains, with different individuals, and whether the size of the zone changes over time. There is also not a common metric scale to measure the ZPD. Next, the philosophy solely explains the social interactions. The extrinsic factor only and does not include other aspects such as biological individualities. And lastly, scaffolding can be a drawback for teachers as it necessitates of giving up control to allow learners to learn at their own pace. It is also time consuming. Learners might not have adequate time to accomplish their entire scaffolding lesson.
personally, as a learner myself, nagkaroon ako ng mga experiences sa pag-aaral. Siyempre, lahat naman tayo nangihirapan sa studies. Lahat naman tayo may pinagdadaan. At one time, may na-experience ako sa mat na, sa mat na klase namin. Nagkaroon kami ng graded recitation tapos magsusulat sa blackboard ng sagot. O, te, ang lola mo, hindi nakasagot. Wala pumapasok sa isip ko dahil hindi talaga akong magaling sa mat. Tapos, ang ginawa ng teacher ko, nag-scap folding siya. Tap, tinuro niya sa akin kung paano isolve yun. Binigyan niya ako ng formula. E di nasagot ko. Tapos, after class, um, pinapunta niya ako sa harap niya. E di, nagtanong ako kung bakit. Sabi ko, sabi niya sa akin, um, sa susunod daw, mag-aral na ako ng lesson namin sa mat. Para hindi ako bobo sa harap. Kasi, nakakahiya. Tapos yun na nga, ang take ko sa theory ni Dr. Lev Vygotsky, um, yung scaffolding niya, sobrang nakakatulong ng social interaction para sa pag-aaral natin. Kasi, paano na lang kung hindi mo close yung wala kang relationship dun sa teacher mo o kaya hindi mo siya close o kaya parang parang distant ka sa mga tao sa paligid mo o sinong tutulong sa'yo pag graded recitation o ba diba? dapat meron kang uh, mga friends o kaya may social interaction ka sa mga classmates mo para kapag nahihirapan ka may tutulong sa'yo My personal insight about the topic So yung pinakatutunan ko o yung tumatak sa isip ko uh, with regards sa premise or sa theory ni Dr. Lev Vygotsky is yung scaffolding So as a learner in a future professional in my chosen career, uh, na-realize ko yung importance ng scaffolding. Dahil dito sa scaffolding, hinahayaan lang yung learner matuto sa kanyang sariling pamamaraan or at least for her own facing. So napakahalaga na ma-engage yung sarili sa kung ano yung environment na, importa na comfortable kang matuto or makapag-gather ng information. So sa scaffolding, uh, natututunan natin na matuto with less supervision ng mga facilitators. And ang importante dito is yung ma-master para from uh, learner, kapag ka tumanda na siya or kapag ka naging adult na siya, uh, mas, mas ma-adapt niya yung foundation ng scaffolding and magiging better yung outcome sa learning process niya. Kasi uh, magkakaroon na siya ng individuality or uh, mapapractice niya, niya yung sarili na makapag-gather or makapag-learn ng new information sa sarili niyang pamamaraan. So, itong scaffolding, uh, napaka-importante ma-practice or napaka-importante niya sa teaching strategy dahil uh, yung approach na to, naka-centered naka lang siya sa uh, learning process ng individual and mas less yung focus niya sa mga facilitator. Good day everyone, this is my personal insight about our presentation. According in socio-cultural theory, social interaction and culture influence the cognitive development of the child and how they see the world. And I am personally believe that premise as we relate it to the phenomenal events like this COVID-19 pandemic, we would see that language, guidance or supervision and instruction by the educators are very important for the children to acquire the knowledge or information. But how could it be possible when we are now taking online classes? It is not only a challenge to the learner but also to the educator. This theory helps me to realize that maybe communication and guidance are the reasons why children nowadays have a hard time learning. So if you have a sibling or relative in your home that has a synchronous activity or work home, and if you have time to guide them or teach them, grab that opportunity. You can help them. So, bilang studyante, mas madaling matuto or matutunan isang bagay or lesson kung hindi lang puro nakapokus sa normal discussion. Like, kagaya nga na sinabi ni Lev Bigotsky, Bigotsky sa constructivism, yung learner, hinahaya ang mag-construct ng sarili nilang knowledge kasi sa tinuturoan sila lagi. So, Dapat hayaan ng student na mag-explore at matuto on their own understanding based sa experiences nila. Mas creative at exciting ang classroom discussion kung hindi lang puro basa sulat or normal discussion na 
kundi may mga ways din ng teaching na pwedeng magdagdag excitement para mas madaling matuto kung maintindihan ng estudyante yung lessons. So, um, example lang dyan is yung pag-create nga ng video. So, pag sa pag-create ng video, hindi ka lang basta nagde-discuss or nagbibigyan information sa viewers, kundi yung pagiging creative mo din para makatch yung attention nila at mas makinig sila sa'yo. So, sa normal discussion kasi, um, teacher and student set up. So, yung teacher yung nagtuturo, nagbibigyan ito student. So, kung magbibibyo ka naman, para ikaw yung teacher plus student ka din. Kasi nagtuturo ka, na. Tapos, nagiging creative ka din as a student. Ganun. So, um, kagaya nga nung sa theory na pag-practivity, natututo ka on their own. At the same time, ginadagdagan ng teacher mo yung pre-existing knowledge mo. Ang insight ko para sa theory ni Levy Gotsky na social-cultural theory, bilang isang mag-aaral, Malaki ang naitutulong sa akin ng social interaction sa pagkatuto. Sa tulong ng social interaction and right communication, mas napapalawak o nadadagdagan yung understanding and ideas na meron ako. Ayon sa concept ng theory na zone of proximal development, mas successful lang ang nagiging outcome ng pagkatuto ng isang estudyante kapag nakaka-receive siya ng proper guidance and assistance mula sa teacher and knowledgeable peers. For example, sa akin, mas nagiging successful yung outcome ng activities na nagagawa ko kapag nakakareceive ako ng assistance and guidance mula sa professor. At sa tulong ng communication, nakikipag-communicate ako sa mga kaklasmate ko upang madagdagan yung ideas na meron ako upang matapos ko yung mga activity ng tama. Pag-aaral ng theory na to ni Levi Gotsky, Na-realize ko na ang daming beses ko na palang naranasan yung scaffolding. Kagaya na lang nung high school ako. Dati hindi talaga ako marunong magbasa ng English. Lugar. No, ano naalala ko pa nga nung basa ko pa sa legit nun. Legit. Pinagtawanan talaga ako ng mga classmates ko. Nakakahiya. Tapos ayun. Tinuran ako ng teacher ko. Na ginayad niya ako. Tapos... Pinaliwanag niya sa akin kung anong English na ito, anong ibig sabihin na ito. Pinagbabasa niya ako pag may free time siya. Ganon din yung ginagawa ng mga kaibigan ko. Pag alam nilang mali yung pinabasa ko, inaano nila, tinatamba nila. Tapos pinapaliwanag nila sa akin. Hindi sila, din nila ako tinatawanan. Tapos ayun, ginayad ako ng mga kaibigan ko, ng teacher ko. Hindi nila talaga ako tinigilan sa pagtutor. Hindi sila nagsawa sa akin nandun sa pagkatapos noon. Mawa nung na ako magbasa, alam ko na yung English ng neto. Alam ko na yung meaning neto. Alam ko na ng, yung meaning ng English word na to. Tapos ayun. Kaya yung social interaction talaga, mahalaga talaga yan sa pagkatuto natin. Kasi nga, pag ikaw lang mag-isa, matatagalan ka, may hirapan kang matuto kasi nga ikaw lang mag-isa, walang nag-guide sa'yo, walang umaalalay sa'yo. Kaya sobrang laking tulong talaga ng scaffolding sa buhay natin lahat. So, may apply ko ngayon yung scaffolding, lalo na ngayon sa trabaho. Especially ngayon, uh, kaka-start ko lang. Bali, ginagayda ko ng mga trainer ko para magawa yung mga dapat kong gawin at alamin kung ano yung mga kailangan kong i-practice. So, syempre, scaffolding, malaking tulong talaga, lalo na sa kagaya ko na na hindi ganun kadali matutunan yung mga bagay, lalo na sa workplace ko. So, ayun lang. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Shaila Nicoldi. I'm the group number 6. Sana may naintindihan kayo sa aming video for today. At sana naintindihan nyo kung ano ang scaffolding nila bigot si. And I do believe in saying, what a child can do today with assistance, she will be able to do by herself tomorrow. Yun lamang po at salamat po sa panonood.